What a Sunday. Incredible comebacks here and there all over the league. Two games, a double header left to go tonight. Carmen Batali joining us to break it down. We will have Darius Butler to do the same. Uh, Omar Kelly, some excellent reporters stopping by to give us the goods. People were in the different stadiums across the league and with the teams in the locker room. Uh, and we will have James Jones in a bit. But let's start with this. Credit to Green Bay. Green Bay loves to do my life mantra, undersell and over deliver. I just want to kick things off today by saying I vow here and now to never again discuss the Packers after week one. Good or bad, there is no point. And if I forget, someone remind me next year when it's all woe is me and the Titanic violins after four quarters of Green Bay action. I am not buying it. They looked great. Last night, was all about balance. So much running. James Jones might not like that as he joins us in a bit. The defense played really well, too, and that matters. It cannot be just Rodgers. It cannot be just the run game. I mean, they're going to have to stop Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo now that he's back, and they probably have some bout with each other in the playoffs. This team needs to feel confident in the Rashawn Garys and the Preston Smiths to step up and make plays and deny plays from happening. I'm from Chicago, so I don't, do I have to say something great about the Bears? Listen, the run game got a bit feisty there for a bit. They do have fight. Uh, they are also, I believe, currently lobbying outside of the NFL League office on Park Avenue in New York City right now for some goal line technology. But that's neither here nor there. They're focused on the future. Sunday, all about comebacks. Cardinals over the Raiders. Uh, I will be talking to Kyler Murray later today, by the way, so stay tuned this week for that. Byron Murphy, Simmons, the big plays there. The Falcons nearly came back against the Rams. The Jets with Flacco came back with a win over the Browns. You love to see it. Uh, I have to give love to the comeback Finns, though, because 21-point deficit in in the fourth quarter, Miami. We see you, we love you, you were the toast of the town. Down big to the Ravens. They made a couple of huge defensive stops and the offense came on fire. The takeaway to me is simple. Tua is legit, Mike McDaniel is legit, and they together, in fact, some simple addition, are a perfect combo. His offense is creative. He's playing a Tua strengths, which are, of course, accuracy and anticipation, the RPOs, constant motion, keeping the defenders on their heels, uh, and opening up windows that he can thread. The way they utilize the speed and McDaniel's pressers, which are now appointment viewing in the NFL, I liked hearing this yesterday. This is rare. After the first game, I just wanted to see the guy enjoy playing football and understand that, yes, you want to make the perfect read and the perfect throw every time. But who cares if you just get better at one thing a game, you're going to be pretty good at the end of the season. So let's, let's just press forward. McDaniel cares. He understands Tua. That's obvious. And enjoying it and winning and McDaniel's creativity leads to confidence. And players buying into confidence leads to magic. Look at this from Daniel Oyafusi. I hope I'm getting that name right. Miami Dolphins beat writer for the Herald. Before Jalen Waddell's game-winning touchdown catch, Tua Tungvaloa told the huddle, it's either us or them. I felt that. It got me going, said Waddle. Watch out for this team. They were my number nine bold prediction for the season that they're going to shut everybody up and prove everyone wrong. Of course, a huge, huge game against the Bills. Short week for the Bills on week three, so that's huge. And we will have Darius Butler, our Dolphins enthusiast, coming up with more of that in a bit. And quickly, Trey Lance carted off. we got to get to this early in yesterday's Niners game. Listen, this was his third career start. Absolutely brutal. Broke his ankle, done for the season. Jimmy Garoppolo comes in, and he was solid. He had one passing touchdown to Dwelly. He had a rushing touchdown. Good passer rating, 27-7 win over Seattle. And he had this big smile. And who should be smiling the Niners brass? Because they look like geniuses. Simple takeaway, but it matters. Everyone seemed to think it was a foregone conclusion that he would and should be traded. They got so much grief for bringing Jimmy Garoppolo back into the building, so much venom. But they reworked his deal to keep him around, and it might have saved their season. Do you understand? It might have saved their season. By the way, Fire Kyle was trending. With many a disgruntled fan and bitter pundit in the Bay Area criticizing Shanahan for endangering Trey Lance. This is ridiculous. Harbaugh didn't get blamed for Lamar getting hurt, did he? Sirianni wouldn't get blamed if Hurts got injured. McDermott won't get blamed if Josh Allen goes down. Collins were said in the fourth quarter last night that maybe Eberflus should get fields running a bit when they got effective in the run game against Green Bay. Why do we need someone to blame? 
really think about that as you're celebrating your wins for your team or you're trying to rebuild or figure things out. Shanahan utilized his quarterback skill set in a way that any good offensive-minded coach would. To say otherwise is honestly a bit laughable. Fire Kyle, you cannot like him. You might not like him in a press conference. And I know it's frustrating when players get hurt. It is an unfortunate reality of the game. It doesn't mean it's somebody's fault. All right, there's my soapbox for today.